Hello there. So, there's never been a better time to start your own personal website or websites. And I think that although it's a great stride to make, there are a lot of decisions that people often get confused by. One of them is choosing how to host their website. Not just what with, with what host, but how to host their website. There are four main alternatives I want to talk about in this video and explain sort of the pros and cons and my perspective on them because I get a lot of questions about them. One is traditional hosting, that is have, renting some server space and uploading your website there and hosting it from there. Uh, second is using one of the many free hosts out there nowadays, GitHub pages, having a separate Tumblr blog that serves as your domain name, or having some other kind of free host out there. Third is self-hosting, much loved by independent people. There are some complications to it, but it's always an interesting option. And my personal favorite, having a virtual private server, which I know a lot of people actually don't know about, but they're very common nowadays. And I will go ahead and say that that is my recommended choice, but there are pros and cons to all four of them. So I wanna talk about them, give my perspective, I'm going to run through all four of the options and then we'll take it from there. So I hope you learned something and I hope this makes it easier to make your decision when starting your website. Now, the first option, as I said, is what I'm calling traditional hosting. Now, what I mean by this is when you usually go to some kind of domain host and you say you pay some amount of money to basically rent server space for you to upload files and have your, your website there. Now, this of course is opposed to the other original alternative was you know just to host your own website, but of course there are downsides to that. We'll talk about that when we talk about self-hosting. Um, but traditional hosting usually is relatively cheap. You have to, you'll pay more than you pay for your domain name usually, um, but it's relatively cheap and you can just put files on some kind of web server. Um, so one example of it uh, here is nearlyfreespeech.net. Uh, this is a nice site. It's actually a pay-as-you-go kind of host where you pay determine, you know, depending on however much bandwidth you use. But typically when you have a traditional host, you'll pay some amount, which is usually around $3 a month. I think that's about a normal amount. And you can upload files to a particular directory on a server and that will broadcast your website. Now, to be clear, this when you're putting your files on the server, this is actually a server used by many different people. Um, you don't have root access to the server. You can't make changes to that. And when I talk about VPSs, I'll talk about why this is probably a, a sort of a bad thing. Um, but the benefits of it is that you don't actually have to worry about setting up a server. You don't have to install Apache or figure out how that works or something like that. So I'll go ahead, I'll say this again later in the video, but if you just want to have one website and do whatever you want on it, uh, having a traditional host is probably a good option. But if you want to have more than one website, I'm going to recommend you to use a VPS. When I talk about VPSs, I'll talk about that. Now, the second option out there, which might be more appealing because it is free, is to host on some kind of free provider. Now, this is a more general recommendation. There's not like one place you can go to, but I'll put it this way. Uh, I have two tabs pulled up here, GitLab and GitHub. Both of these sites allow you to have what are called either GitLab pages or GitHub pages, where you can, using Git, upload your own website as a repository and host it for people to see. Now, of course, you don't get a domain name with this, but you can usually ha set up a domain name so it looks to this website. So if your domain is mydomain.com, um, that will not just redirect to the URL of your GitLab pages uh, blog or, or website generally. It'll also, of course, totally alias it, so it'll just it'll appear as my blog or whatever. Um, now, this is nice, of course, because it's free. Uh, you can, I pulled up GitLab and GitHub here, but this could apply for a Blogspot um, account or, does Blogspot still exist? I actually don't know. But theoretically, if it did exist, it could apply to Blogspot or it could apply to, say, a Tumblr or any kind of place where you can usually have your own account and a blog. You could just use that as your website and 
all of those sites will usually provide a way for you to link a domain name with it. So if someone goes to that domain name, they will be viewing your Tumblr blog or whatever it is, but they won't know that. They'll just see it as whatever website. Now the downside of this, well, the, the upside of course is, well, you get it for free. You can do whatever you want. Uh, well, actually, no, the downside is you can do whatever you want. And that is because often uh, these kind of sites will be very constrained in what kind of user interface you can have or how the website is actually generated. Um, so on GitLab and GitHub, for example, I'm pretty sure you can have any kind of static HTML or you can use Hugo or Jekyll to generate a site. Um, but Outside of that, there's not really that much you can do. You can't really have, if you need server side scripts for something, you can't really do that. If you need some extra software, you can't really install that. Uh, they're very limited. I would recommend I would recommend GitHub or GitLab or one of the even you know Tumblr or whatever. If you have some kind of blog that already exists, you can link that to a domain name. Um, now, of course, this isn't really a fully customizable website, but if you're just making a personal page and that's all you need, this might just be all you need. So it's definitely worthwhile contemplating. So option number three is self-hosting. And a lot of people get really excited when they hear about self-hosting because they like the idea of having your own website that you manage yourself with a physical device, often with an old computer or one of these, a Raspberry Pi. Now the good news is you don't need you know, 30,000 cores to run a website. You don't actually need that much space. Um, but what you de do need to worry about in self-hosting is stuff like bandwidth, which can honestly be a big problem, or how much power consumption you have. Now, I will say the reason I do not recommend self-hosting, especially if you're watching this video and you're looking for directions on what to do, you know, how to start a first your first website, I don't recommend using self-hosting just because there are a whole bunch of complications that come into it. Um, if you want your site to be to get a good bit of traffic, it's not necessarily an option to have it at your physical house or something like that. Now, if you have access to, uh, you know, some place with which has really good internet, you have lots of, you know, good machinery that can keep cool and not actually use that much power or better, you don't have to pay for all the energy it consumes. You could think about self-hosting somewhere there, but uh, hosting a site on your own house, uh, you should really only do that if I mean, if you're a novice, if you're doing it out of mere academic interest, you just want to do it to just to do it and not necessarily because you want to have a website that gets a good amount of traffic. Because if you want, I mean, when you, you have to think about it, like when people are accessing your website, they're accessing your computer that you have on your home internet or something like that. And that can, depending on how much traffic you get, that can affect your home internet and it also might potentially make your website extremely sluggish. So that is, that is a big consideration depending on how much traffic you're going to get. Now there are examples of some people who self-host websites. There is this one, uh, a couple of you guys probably know of this already, it's pickfire.tk. It's an interesting site, you might want to, might, might want to check it out. It's actually a website hosted entirely free, uh, it, down from the domain name to everything else. Um, but I, I believe this is run on a Raspberry Pi as well. And the thing about the site is it's cool. It's nice It's nice to have a site like this, which is, again, self-hosted from the bottom up. But uh, it will, you know, occasionally go off. Or when you people are seeing this video when I'm putting it out, if there are thousands or hundreds of people seeing this site, it'll probably be really sluggish or not pop up. So that is one concern. If you want any reasonable amount of traffic, especially in acute periods of time, self-hosting is not necessarily what you want to do. Um, now, self-hosting, of course, does, uh, when I talk about VPSs, self-hosting has a lot of the advantages of having a VPS because really you can manage a server, you have root access, you can do pretty much anything you want, but a VPS is probably a better choice generally. So what is a VPS? Number four, the last type of hosting, and the one that I recommend and I use myself. A VPS is a virtual private server. It's sort of like hosting in that you're buying service, buying a service from some kind of provider, but instead of 
purchasing, renting a portion of their hard drive, you get an entire virtual server that you have root access to. You can install whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can configure whatever websites you want. Now I've left out some of the downsides of hosting on a traditional hosting service for this so I can explain to you why VPSs are so nice. Now again, uh, Self-hosting will have many of these benefits, but I think having a VPS is a little better because you don't have to worry about bandwidth or anything like that. Now here is my VPS host. Again, I give no particular endorsement to Namecheap. It just happens to be what I use. Now the downside to a VPS is the price. I pay $14.88. $14.88 might sound a little scary to some of you guys, but it isn't really that bad because even though I'm paying nearly $15 a month, for a VPS, there are a lot of costs that I'm saving. Now, in comparison to a, a physical server at your house that you're hosting, of course, I'm not paying for power. I don't have to worry about the bandwidth because this bandwidth is plenty for my multiple websites, a terabyte of bandwidth a month. Um, and it also has an SSD and all that kind of stuff. But the real benefits of uh, having a VPS are, are pretty simple to explain. Um, now, let me put it this way. I have I have a personal website, lukesmith.xyz. I have another website called larbs.xyz. I have another website, notrelated.xyz. In fact, I have a bunch of different websites and all of them are hosted on the same VPS. So this $15 is actually going to all those different websites. Now compare that with having traditional hosting. The problem with traditional hosting is that they will often nickel and dime you for either having different domains or even subdomains. So if I I go to my website, so this is lukesmith.xyz, uh, on a lot of typical hosts, they will charge you extra for having a subdomain. If you want blog.lukesmith.xyz, or if you just want another domain name or something like that. Now, if you have a VPS or a self host, or if you self host, but if you have a VPS, you can get as many websites as you want. All you have to do is configure it in the server, which isn't a very difficult process. You can have as many websites, as many subdomains, as many anything that you want. Additionally, uh, you have root access to that server. That means you can install whatever software you want. If you want to have an IRC server, you can have that. You want to have a, a Chan style image board, you can have that. You want to have a uh, PHP board. I once had a MyBB uh, PHP board on a form, a web form on my website. That's easy to do. You can just install that on a VPS. You can't install that on traditional hosting. Or if you can, you'll have to install often obsolete software that they make available to you through their graphical interface that isn't very flexible. And it, it's not, it, it's honestly just a big pain. So if you're the kind of person who just wants one website and one website only, uh, hosting might be okay, traditional hosting might be okay, but you really want a VPS if you're gonna have any, if you wanna have multiple subdomains or domain names or stuff like this, because frankly, traditional hosts, since they have to configure this kind of stuff for you, they will charge you out the wazoo just to have this kind of stuff. And it's sort of a pain. Now, the other thing that's also super important nowadays is SSL or HTTPS. You'll see that all of my websites here, they all have HTTPS. So if you are doing any kind of sensitive transactions on your website, you 1000% need HTTPS. Um, if you have just normal websites like me, you'll probably want them. You'll, you'll be higher in search results uh, if you have HTTPS, and it's just nice to have that extra layer of security. Um, but in order to get HTTPS or SSL, you have to get a certificate, which expires after a certain period. But luckily nowadays, there's this nice thing called CertBot, uh, EFF.org. CertBot is this nice little thing put out by the Electronic Frontier Foundation that can get you free SSL certificates. You don't have to pay for anything and it will actually auto renew them. Now I mentioned this because I get all the HTTPS for all my websites with CertBot and I can only use CertBot because I have a, an actual VPS. Um, if I had traditional hosting, what often happens is if you want HTTPS, you'll have to pay, you'll have to buy a certificate either through your host or a third party. That's sometimes cheaper, but then they'll charge you an installation fee and then you have to renew them after every couple of months. And it's just a huge pain having to do something like that. So ironically enough, 
Um, even though, again, this may sound like a whole lot more money paying nearly $15 a month to ha host all these websites, but I get all the websites. Um, I don't have to pay for HTTPS when nowadays, I mean, I mean, this might change, mind you, what I'm saying about HTTP, HTTPS, but right now at the beginning of 2019, pretty much all hosts that have traditional hosting, they will charge extra for, you know, having HTTPS and setting that up because they have to do a lot of the configuration. But if you have your own VPS, you can just do, you don't have to worry about it. You can just ignore most of what I'm saying because once you run CertBot and you set it to auto renew, you don't have to worry about it. It's just not something you have to think about. And so that, that's one of the reasons that uh, while I actually used to use traditional hosting, this is one of the reasons I actually actually switched to a VPS because I realized that I would be paying way more if I had traditional hosting and I had to maintain all these certificates and, you know, check and see if they were expiring. That's a big pain. It's nice just having it done automatically on a server that I can control and install software on. So that that is why I recommend VPSs. Um, now, mine here, again, 1488, um, that is actually, I, I don't want to say it's expensive, but it's, it's probably normal. You can actually find sites that offer uh, VPSs of about the same bandwidth for a good bit less. I'll put some of those in the video description. Some of you guys actually re recommended some of them, but just check those out. All right, so there you have it. Again, my recommendation for most people is probably to get a virtual private server, but if you just really want one website and one website only, and you're not too worried about configuring things or having your own server where you can install your own stuff, it might be better to get a free host or a, one of those cheap traditional hosting plans. I'd only recommend self-hosting for people who really know what they're doing, who know about their bandwidth limitations and know that they can deal with them uh, and other stuff like that. So I, I recommend VPSs, not just for the reasons I gave, that is you can have multiple domains very easily, you don't have to worry about the bandwidth, you can easily set up HTTPS, not just for that, but as a general principle, having your own server to be able to maintain is very nice. And a VPS sort of has all the benefits of having your own uh, physical server in your house in that you can use that, you can use the software however you want, but you don't have to worry about the constraints of the internet at your home or other mechanical constraints. It really makes dealing with a website, you only have to deal with the website portion. You don't have to deal with the details and although you are paying money, although you have to pay a little bit more money than you would for a traditional host, you actually avoid a lot of the physical difficulties of having a physical server. But again, there is none of these four options are bad. That is my personal recommendation. But depending on your use case or your specific needs or your constraints or your personal knowledge, you might, you know, any one of these four could be a possible option. But I will say in my in my exposure, in the, in the kind of people who ask me questions, especially you guys who uh, follow the channel, most of you guys are probably going to be best using VPSs. They allow you to be most flexible without having to deal with any of that kind of overhead or frustration. So anyway, I'll be doing more videos on setting up your own website, including managing an Apache web server, managing a VPS, how to actually install sites, multiple sites, doing CertBot and HTTPS, all these kind of things, probably relatively soon. So I hope you learned something from this video and I will see you guys next time.